She is caught in the desperate place between wife and widow. Zainab Am Sheikh's husband is one of the missing port workers. She hopes for his life. She fears he is lost. I only ask them to bring him out dead or alive, she tells me. We know nothing. We wait here to be close by. She is joined by many others who also must wait on the street for news. The lack of information is fueling fury towards a government seen as failing even before the explosion. If they cannot find our children, we will burn Lebanon, this father says. We will make a revolution. The steady stream of ambulances and rescue teams suggests the news when it comes will be the hardest to hear. There's no living. For now, three days, consecutive days, I don't think there's uh, no living anymore. Uh, we are trying to find uh, dead bodies. It must be very hard of, for you. Yeah, it's very hard and uh, very difficult. We need support. Uh, we need a lot of uh, uh, support. Support is now coming from abroad. French search teams preparing to work through the tons of rubble and grain. When you look at this scene, you realise what a monumental task the rescue workers face and what an incredibly long wait it may be for the families. More footage has now emerged of the moments leading to the explosion. A couple whose home overlooked the port began filming when the first fire broke out. What became of that family is unclear. What happened to others is painfully obvious. Zakaria and Yahir left hospital today. A Syrian family displaced to a place they thought was safe, now homeless once more. Their little faces stitched where the glass from the windows hit them. The most valuable things in my life are my children, their father said. I wish I'd taken the hurt and not them. I don't feel my injuries when I see them like this. Few places in this city had sanctity from the blast. Today, Father Marwan Mawad relived the moment he and his parishioners fled for their lives. When we felt the earth shake, we saw, we saw the glasses uh, shake. The live stream of his mass captured the moment the shockwave hit, two kilometres from the epicentre. Uh, we are so uh, scared, are so scared, because uh, uh, we are not secure. Those who could find no escape are now being buried. Sahar Faris was a 25-year-old first responder who went to help amid reports of a fire and was then caught in the blast. Hers is among the first of the funerals. This broken city will be burying its dead for many more days. Yet amidst the grief, there is fury. And tonight, security forces tear gas protesters who tried to storm the parliament. In the two days since the explosion at the port, anger has been building here in Beirut. The tear gassing of protesters here in Martyrs Square can only inflame that situation. Lebanon is no stranger to difficult times. There are surely more ahead. Emma Murphy, News at 10, Beirut.